He's the host of What in the World on Sirius XM. It's great to be able to face off against none other than the very vocal and opinionated Richard Gardner. Richard, thanks for taking the time for doing the show out there in Toronto. Toronto, as they say. How are you, Adam? <laughs> good, good. Thanks for being on the show. You're an ex-Montrealer. First and foremost, how is it to be living in an area where people are cheering on the Leafs? Well, it's going on 20 years uh, now that I've been in Toronto, and uh, it's been everything. I guess it's been amusing at times, depending on your stance. Uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say there was a part of me at times that uh, enjoys uh, the Leafs' uh, up and down roller coaster of emotions here, especially with the fans. But mostly that's because I resent the organization, uh, Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, as much as I do, and I think for good reason. But it is more fun being in the city when the Leafs are in the playoffs, but I think that's almost now a theoretical statement. Well, let's talk about the Leafs. So we talk about uh, the organizational woes that they've had. Uh, it's been frustrating for a Leafs fan, especially the meltdown against Boston. In your mind, what's the biggest issue and challenge and obstacle that the Leafs have to overcome to finally see some success and give their fans what they deserve? Capitalism. Capitalism would be the biggest obstacle, and that started long before the salary cap era actually gave this organization an out where they could actually claim that they would love to spend $200 million a year, but they can't now. But really, this started when MLSE figured out that the brand, uh, the Leafs brand, was as strong as it was, and that essentially it's crack cocaine in this city. One, when you know that you don't have to do anything, in this case, put a winning product on the ice to fill a building uh, with the most expensive tickets in the league, in sports almost, and you're valued every year by Forbes magazine as the, as the, you know, the most uh, valuable franchise in hockey, well, you're not obviously incentivized to do much more, especially if it involves spending more money to get to the top of the mountain. That doesn't necessarily appease the fans, but these fans essentially suffer from Stockholm syndrome in this city uh, that they've uh, somehow, you know, fallen in love or identified with their captors. Well, you know, obviously, Brendan Shanahan is a big part of that. You talk about so many different levels. Uh, there is a little bit of blame with regards to the organization. There could be a little bit of blame on the, the fans themselves, depending on how you see it. But for sure, someone who's going to eat uh, the brunt of that uh, is going to be Brendan, Brendan Shanahan. What do you think of his position? What do you think of what he's done? And is he the right fit? Well, the odd thing is on the other side of the organization that we were just talking about, let's say it was somebody coming in to sell condos with the Leafs brand or – uh, expand uh, their ancillary revenue. They wouldn't, if they did a, a search for, let's say, that CEO or president position, I can guarantee you the person who would have gotten the job would not have been coming to the table with uh, no qualifications at this level. It became a bit trendy recently, obviously, Joe Sack in Colorado, Cam Ely in Boston, where there was some success there, and now obviously Trevor Linden in Vancouver. We know how sports is, right? Everybody sort of uh, waits for somebody to finally step outside of the box and then everybody else follows. This is the trend right now that you go out and get a former player with a lot of cachet, a lot of profile in the community, and you let them steer the ship. To, to this point, Cam Neely in Boston is probably the best example of success, but Brendan Shanahan is not a guy that's uh, well-liked necessarily as much as you would think. The public likes Brendan Shanahan. He's not as respected in the league for some reasons that we could talk about on another show. But at the very least, right now, he's learning on the job. That's undeniable. And I don't think the fans here necessarily deserve to wait another three to five years to get a winner on the ice. Before we let you go, we're going to have some fun with you on a rapid-fire segment. I'm going to throw a couple of questions out there with you. And you just go ahead and give me your first thought that comes to mind. You ready to go? That's dangerous. <laughs> All right, so here we go. What would be the first trade you would make for the Leafs? Uh, Dion Phaneuf. Uh, he has to go. Well, that leads right into my next question. As a defenseman, where do you rank from 1 to 10? Dion Phaneuf? Uh, six. Most surprised, six NHL, most surprised NHL team this season for you? Calgary Flames. P.K. Subban or Drew Doughty? I think P.K. Subban because he, 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 he <laughs> works on his crafts. Uh, Doughty's got to hit the gym. Is Yaroslav Alak for real? Oh, wow, man. Thought he was done. And where? And how ironic he gets resurrected in, in of all places, uh, Long Island. And last but not least, one word to describe Jean Beliveau. Class. 
Well, it's classy to have you on. Thanks for taking the time, Richard Gardner. We'll be in touch soon. Good stuff, Adam. Thanks, man. Thanks. Stay with us. My rant is up next. You don't want to go anywhere.